Amen. How many of you were blessed uh, by last um, Sunday's message, What's in Your Heart? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the understanding uh, uh, of coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, search my heart. Know what's in there, God. And if there's anything in my heart that does not please you, does not, is not good for you, oh, God, then, then reveal it to me so that I can cast it out in the name of Jesus and that I can walk down the path of everlasting. See, but there's, when we talked about last Sunday, it's an understanding that we got to be real with God. Even though God knows all things, amen, but sometimes we got to come before God and say, you know what, I know it's there and I'm tired of just denying it. And we talked about what's in your heart. We talked about is anger in your heart? Is lust in your heart? Is anxiety in your heart? What's in your heart? Some of us have revival in our heart. Some of us have fire in our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? But just coming before the Lord and saying, search me. Search me. And just believe that when we come before the living God and we say, Lord, I'm tired of being angry all the time. I'm tired of anxiety always crippling me. Oh, God, I'm tired of the depression that always sets in, that cripples me, and that does not allow me to move forward. I'm tired of the fear that's in my innermost being and believe and trust that God will be right there to guide you and say, my child, now, come on, now we can work. Now we can allow the, my healing touch to come upon you. And guide you and teach you. Because oh, I think Brother Jonathan said it, through adversity, we learn. Right? Through adversity, character is built. And when we understand that through that, God uses all things together for the good of those who love him. Come on. God uses all things together for the good of those who love him. And when we understand that in me, whatever is not pleasing to God, God will turn around and use it for his glory if, I, if I'm just real with the living God. And so that's going to lead me into our message for this Sunday. I'm going to start a series uh, called The Kingdom. And it's just mainly talking about the kingdom of God, and we're going to break it down into the next uh, several weeks. But I'm excited uh, for this particular message here because sometimes we lose sight that everything that we do is for the kingdom of God. Nothing that we do here is for ourselves. Nothing that we do here on earth is just so that I can be comfortable and that I can just be in this space where it's like I don't have to be challenged and I don't have to be stretched and I don't have to, I have to step out of my comfort zone. But the understanding that God and his kingdom is priority in everything that we do, especially when we come before him and say, yes, Lord, I am a follower of you. Especially when we say, oh God, I am a Christian. Let me tell you that when we come before God and we say, God, forgive me, cleanse me, make me new. I want to follow you, Lord God. And wherever it is you want to take me, I'm going to go. See, there's some responsibility on our part. There's some responsibility on our part that says, Lord God, yes, as you guide me, I'm going to go. Because the Lord himself will not come in and just possess you and force you to go in the directions that, that he is calling you to go. No, there's a level of obedience that has to be submitted to him that says, God, I trust you. And a lot of it boils down to just that word, trust. Sometimes we don't move any further than where we're at because ultimately we don't trust God enough to say, Lord, take me out of my comfort zone. Take me out of the areas that I'm used to. Sometimes we don't want to step out of that. Why? Because I am comfortable. And second, I really don't know, God, if you're going to catch me if I fall. I don't know if I go, Lord God, in the direction that you're calling me, Lord God, if you're truly going to be there. And I hope and I pray that this message this morning will give clarity to your mind and to your heart and the understanding that God loves you more than you could ever love yourself. God loves you with a love that is so deep that if you truly understood his love, all you would do is weep. <coughs> all you would do is weep if you got to experience the pure love of God. When I, uh, where I worked at before at the bank, I had a gentleman that came in one time, an older gentleman, and we got to talking, and the conversation opened up about the Lord, and so we were just going into it. He said when he was younger, 
um, he was working on an oil rig and, and, and a big old piece of um, machinery fell on him, crushed him, broke many, many bones in his body. I mean, healing that had it, last, it lasted for months and months and months and months for, them, for him to heal. But he said that he had an experience with God during that. And he says, I usually don't like to share this because when I do, I tend to cry. And this was like, like maybe 35, 40 years later, right? This is when he was younger. And sure enough, you know, this older gentleman in my office just like tearing up. And he says, I experienced the love of God. Immediately starts weeping. And he says, there's only one way that I can explain the love of God. And I said, man, bro, tell me, right? Tell me. He says, imagine the ocean, right? Tons of water in the ocean. And he says, I was in a droplet, right? And I was that drop that was just dropped into the ocean. And the ocean came and just covered me completely. He said, that's the only way I can explain his love. I was just a drop of water being consumed by the waves of the ocean. And when he told me that, I'm like, wow. Is that the kingdom of God? Is that his kingdom that I get to experience that kind of deep and intimate love with my creator? And it's something that we should all desire and yearn for. Thank you. The water. So we're going to start off with our first point, which is seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. And the verse that we're going to open up with here is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And I I put it in under the amplified version. So it says here, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you. All these things will be given to you when you seek me with everything that you have. And I got to go back here because when we understand that particular scripture in context, what he's talking about there is not to worry. And in that very first verse, in verse 25 of the sixth chapter, sixth chapter of Matthew, he says, Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. And then he goes on to speak about uh, you being clothed and you being fed. And and, and he's going into all these details. But ultimately what he's saying is, don't worry about your life. Like, when we read this, we have to grasp that piece and understand it deep in our hearts what God is saying there. He says, don't worry about your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will be given unto thee. All else will be given unto thee. But see, we have to understand because sometimes we are so familiar with these scriptures that we lose sight of the deep meaning of it. See, now when God says that he's going to take care of us, see, God knows what we need. God knows what we need. But let me just clarify some things on here. God doesn't say, seek me first. Seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness and then all else will be given unto thee. He's not saying that so that you don't, you know, you're still on the back burner still worrying about these things. So be like, okay, Lord, so if I seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness then. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody this morning. You read that particular passage, you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to seek your kingdom and your righteousness. Then you're going to take care of all these things for me, right? (laughs) But sometimes we fall trapped in that, that mentality. But when God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he says, don't even think about those things. They're not even worth a lick of your energy worrying about those things. First, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will be given unto thee. It's so important. Not that the things that we need become the 
comes what catapults us towards seeking the kingdom of God, but that seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness will in return cover your needs, which ultimately requires you to give zero energy, zero energy to the things God already knows you need. You know what that equals? It equals freedom to do the will of God and to walk in his righteousness and seek his kingdom. So when we talk about the kingdom, when we talk about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, in the, and, and again with that very first uh, scripture on, in, the, in, the, in, in chapter 6, therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life. We are hindered in the things that God wants to do in us because we are worried. And it's not sometimes like a worry that's so surface, that is so visible and is so obvious. No, 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 no. Sometimes the worry is deep within you. Sometimes the worry is deep within you, and sometimes those particular worries have to be unrooted and brought up. Because let me tell you, stories of individuals abandoning whatever life they had for the kingdom of God should be a normal thing. I hear stories and stories of of missionaries and pastors and and church leaders who, who had these lucrative jobs and these positions, but they abandoned everything for the kingdom of God because they finally grasped that I don't have to worry about my life. I count my life nothing when it comes to the kingdom of God. And I truly believe as we share this particular piece that God is already stirring something within you. And I mentioned it during worship that, that, that you are pregnant with destiny. What does that mean? God has impregnated you with destiny, something that is going to be birthed and something that's going to grow and become stronger and stronger. But see, we have to acknowledge the fact that God has placed something in your heart. God has placed something in your spirit that is so profound that it may even scare you. It may even scare you. Let me tell you right now, those thoughts that you're having right now in ministry, and I know you're having them. I know you're having them. There's many, there's a few in this section, many in this section, in this section, in this section. Let me tell you, you're already having thoughts of yourself in ministry. You're already having thoughts of yourself seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's already been implanted in you. Let me tell you something, if you truly trust and believe God and you truly seek the kingdom of God, that that will come to pass. But you have to understand that don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life because God knows what you need. And I love how it says in in, in that same uh, section there in verse 27, it says, uh, can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? Can you add one moment to your life by worrying? I'm talking big here, guys. I'm talking big. I'm talking about that destiny that's in you. I'm talking about something that God is going to birth through you. Some of you here are pastors. Some of you here are evangelists. Some of you here are going to be the very ones that when we step out and start planting church campuses, other passion church, guess what? You're going to be leading that. You're going to be leading that. And it may sound strange to you. It may sound weird to you. It may sound like so far-fetched. But the reality is that God has already impregnated you with destiny. And it's just a matter of time when that's going to come to pass. And then you're going to be able to look back and say, man, Pastor Romel, he, man, he wasn't crazy. He kind of he knew what he was kind of talking about a little bit. Why can I share that? I can share that because God did the same thing to me. God did the same thing to many of you already that are in positions in ministry that was not part of your plan. I look at Teresa and I hear her story and, I th- and, I, and she talks to me about the position that she had prior. But God says, I don't want you there anymore. I want you somewhere else. I have a bigger plan for you, and it doesn't, it doesn't require the comfortableness of what you're already in, but I need you to step out in faith and follow me. And guess what she did? She did just that thing. Is it always fun? No. But it's always worth it. It's always worth it. 
So seek first the kingdom of God because to seek the kingdom of God is to strive after. It's to aim at. It's to say, this is what I desire. This is what I want. I want to seek the kingdom of God. I want to seek his righteousness. Not my own righteousness, but the character of God. And I know that when I do that, when I release the worrying of everything that I tend to worry about, God already has that mixed. Already taken care of. I only have to have zero energy wasted in that. I just have to focus on what it is that God is doing. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, it is the reality of God coming into the world, into his creation to reveal and display his power and glory and authority over everything. It is God wanting to come in and say, my child, I want my kingdom to reign in you so that when you go out to do my will, you're expanding and growing my kingdom. When we seek after the kingdom of God, it's an understanding that if I am the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, that means I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are the kingdom of God. And where you go, you begin to take over territory for his kingdom because you are part of the kingdom. And you begin to say, this is, doesn't belong to you, enemy. This, is, this belongs to God. That devil, that don't belong to you. That belongs to God. Give it. Come on. That doesn't belong to you. My family? No, that doesn't belong to you. See, it belongs to God. I'm taking it back. My wayward child that hasn't come back? See, that belongs to God. He's, it's just a matter of time when he's going to come back. See, it's the kingdom of God dwelling in you that gives full authority to cast out all things that tries to hinder what it is that God is doing in you. It is God currently working to accomplish his purpose and reveal himself and his plan to his people. It goes beyond spiritual salvation. That's step one. But sometimes we think, I'm saved and so then I'm done. My friend, my brother, my sister, you're just getting started. You're just getting started when we talk about the kingdom of God. When it goes beyond spiritual salvation and the work of the church, it is God expressing himself in a powerful way through us. You are the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and tell him you are the kingdom. Look at your other neighbor and tell him you are the kingdom. <laughs> Come on. When Jesus stepped onto the scene, the kingdom was near. When Jesus stepped onto the scene, see, the kingdom was near. We had no access to the kingdom. But now that Jesus came onto the scene, we have access. And I love when he kicked off his ministry in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is right in the midst of you. To repent means to turn away from your sinful actions and your sinful behaviors and follow me to wholeheartedly. That's understanding the kingdom of God. And even though through scripture it talks about the kingdom of God in different ways. See, I wanted to focus on this particular morning, the understanding of us being the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit of God dwelling in us to accomplish his will here on earth. We spent the first month, first whole part of January, the majority of February, breaking down the vision of the church. Where God is leading us. And so you begin to see how all these pieces come together. When now we understand being kingdom minded, right? To be kingdom minded is to say, yes, Lord God, I'm willing to sacrifice everything for your kingdom. Nothing is worth more than me doing what it is that you're calling me to do. The kingdom of God is living a life empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I love when Jesus says, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. What does it mean to be born again? That means the old you is dead. The old you is dead dead there has been a new spiritual birth and now you're growing in the ways of Jesus and he's guiding you and he's teaching you and he's showing you my child the kingdom of heaven dwells in you and my will will be accomplished through you 
believe and count your life as nothing. So understanding the kingdom, what is righteousness? Righteousness is the perfect holiness of Christ. It is an essential attribute to the character of God. God is righteous. That means he is just plain out right. There is no wrong in him. <laughs> there's no, you know what I mean? That's the simplest way I can put it. God is perfect and there's no wrong in him. God is righteous. It is the literal opposite of sin. It is one who is right. To commit to sin is to go against God's design for our lives. Therefore, righteousness is the only living standard that is acceptable for us to stand before the Father. And I love where it says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28, it says, In the way of righteousness is life, and the pathway thereof there is no death. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is death. No death. Death has been conquered in the name of Jesus. The Bible clearly defines righteousness as something his people should pursue. We should pursue it, but understand that you will never produce it. I got to make this very clear. You pursue it, but you will never be able to produce it. Our righteousness is imputed from Jesus through his work that he accomplished on the cross. We couldn't produce it, so Christ made it available for us. He placed his righteousness on us. And that makes it very clear for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us, so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. But understand that when we take on the righteousness of God, see, then there's a, a, still a responsibility on our end to walk out what God has placed on us. Because it tells us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God places his righteousness upon us so that we can walk in holiness. So that we can be his light that shines bright. In darkness. To be a follower of Jesus. To be embraced by his love. To seek his kingdom above everything else. To seek his righteousness above everything else. It's truly a gift. It's truly a gift. We get to do these things. We get to do ministry. We get to pray for people. We get to do these particular things that says, you know what, apart from Christ, I had no, no authority. I had no, no access. I had nothing. I was an enemy of God. But because of what Christ did, see, now I can walk in the fullness of what he has for me. And I can truly live out what he says in Matthew 6 verse 33. To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will be given unto thee. All else will be given unto thee. If I can have someone come play the keys for me. God is good. And when we understand what Christ has done for us, when we understand that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, breakthrough can happen breakthrough can happen knowing what God has accomplished for us we now know breakthrough to truly seeking the kingdom of God putting aside the worries of this world and walking in the fullness of what Jesus has for you what Jesus has specifically for you I want you to understand this morning when I talk about breakthrough it's breaking out of the familiarity that we are so comfortable in. When we seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness, that is something so profound. That is something so deep that we can't just simply look over those particular passages and say, oh, yes, Lord. I know you're going to take care of these for me as I, 
as I seek your kingdom and, and, and as I seek your righteousness. You're going to take care of this for me, right, God? You're going to take care of this for me. Breakthrough is saying, I don't care about none of this. Breakthrough is saying that I don't, I, I refuse to waste any energy. I refuse to waste any energy on the things that do not matter because I know and I understand who my king is. And when we understand who our king is and we trust him, we trust him regardless of what's happening in the physical I trust what God is doing in the spiritual is that seeking the kingdom of God is that seeking his righteousness is that saying God I'm not going to be settled just by simply saying yes I'm saved but I'm going to do everything I can with every gift that you have given me to make your name known in this place If we're truly going to take over territories, if we're truly going to be planting churches for the kingdom of God, then we must be kingdom-minded people. I'm excited to hear the first story of somebody that says, God has called me. God has called me to abandon everything that I ever knew. God has called me to leave everything behind. Everything that I was used to. Everything that I was so comfortable in. God is calling me to leave that because he has a greater purpose for me. That shows trust in God. That is truly seeking the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And does God do it differently for all of us? Yes. Yes. He does do it differently for all of us. His calling on Teresa is not going to be the same as, as, as the, as the uh, uh, calling on Mike. The calling that God has placed on me is not going to be the same calling that he's going to place on Daisy. It's not about what it looks like. It's about trusting God that he has a plan. And the reality th is and that when we walk into the fullness of what God has for us, that you're going to be uncomfortable. And just be willing just to walk in it. I want the kingdom of God. When I pray, Lord, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every time I say the Lord's Prayer, that particular piece right there always just hits me. Always just hits me. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A breakout of the Holy Spirit and just people flooding to Jesus. People repenting and turning away from their sin. People that are saying, I am done with the life that I have been living. There is nothing there. It is dead. And I'm sick and tired of being around death. I want life. And life can only be found in Christ Jesus, that is seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's brothers and sisters around us that are dying. They're dying. And if we're his hands and feet, if we're his hands and feet, Does that not say that we have a responsibility? Does that not say that, that God has placed something in me to do His will and His work here on earth so truly heaven can touch earth? Oh, glory be to God. If I can have everyone stand. The kingdom. The kingdom.
where Jesus is the king. I think about the kingdom and I think about the king. And in my spirit, it's truly God. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. There's a drawing in me. And it should be that drawing in you that says, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Because I count my life as nothing. So there's some of you here this morning that have been dealing with fear. There's some of you here this morning that have that understanding that there's destiny in you. And it's not that the Lord will reveal it to you in an instant. It is His way, for His ways are perfect. But it's us truly being ready. Because when He says it's time, let's go. Let's go. Don't hesitate, my child. Don't hesitate. Because if you really know who I am, you won't hesitate. If you really understood what I am capable of, you will not hesitate. You would run after me with everything that you have. You would leave and abandon everything behind you. If you truly understand, my child, who I am, Nothing else matters. And it's us grasping that understanding and that mentality right now. Right now. That His will be done through our lifetime leading into eternity. Leading into eternity. So if you're here this morning... And you're done with fear. You're truly at a point where you're saying, I don't want nothing else but Jesus. And I'm willing, as scary as it may be, to verbalize that, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to do it. No questions asked. If that's you this morning, I just simply on the count of three want you to lift your hands up to the heavens and raise them back down. One, two, three. Come on. Come on. Glory be to God. Are you ready to lead a church? Are you ready to be a missionary? Are you ready to be a, an evangelist? Are you ready to be a teacher? Are you ready to share the good news of Jesus? Are you ready? God will reveal those things to you when we truly grasp that particular verse to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be given unto thee. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for each and every person here. I thank you, Lord God, for the hands that were raised to the heavens, Lord God. The hands that are showing you, Father, that they are willing to do what it is that you're calling them to do. Lord, that they will no longer be bound by fear. In the name of Jesus, in your house right now, I cast out fear in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that nothing will hinder what it is that you have started and begun in the lives of those here. Lord, that we can truly grasp in our minds and in our hearts that this territory belongs to you. And the enemy will not have his way. So, Father, right now, I pray your anointing over each person here. I pray, Lord God, that they will get to understand and know you on a deeper level by studying your word and by seeking you in prayer. Lord, that when we pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, 
that we can mean it with every part of our being. So I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. And I want everybody to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. I trust you. I love you. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Let your will be done. In the name of Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Praise the Lord. Give him a shout of praise in this house. Give him a shout of praise in this house. I'll leave you with two things. Love God and love people with passion. Amen.